Hello and welcome. From the rooftop of the Hilton Hotel, the fun and fantasy city of Las Vegas, the boxing capital of the world, stretches out behind me. And here again, the spotlight falls on the young man who's added a new and deadly dimension to the world heavyweight scene, Mike Tyson. Just 20 years of age, 29 wins, 26 knockouts, not a single defeat. His defense of the WBA and the WBC titles against the former champion, Pinkland Thomas, heads a bill that is being called the hard road to glory. If Tyson is victorious, he'll face the winner of the other world title fight that you'll see for the vacant IBF championship, Tony Tucker versus James Douglas, in a final contest in August to determine the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. So it's a double world title bill that we have for you. But first of all, Mike Tyson, who faces a man that he regards as the next best heavyweight in the world, Pinkland Thomas. Mike Tyson is trying to put behind him the memories of the last defense that embarrassing, boring, and bad-tempered affair with James Bone Crusher Smith. Anybody that takes the Bone Crusher Smith fight seriously and looks at it and say, well, this is Mike Tyson at his best, and this is how this is the fighter that I expect to fight when I fight Mike Tyson. They're going to be in for a lot of trouble. I think that Tyson's so used to going in and, and racking guys on the chin and knocking them cold and walking away. Um, I think Smith just proved the point that, you know, the kid is not uh, invincible. I'm always there to fight. I'm always there to get the people their money's worth. He hold both the belts. So I respect him. I have to respect him because he's a champion. But the night of the fight, after the bell ring, I have no respect for him at all. Well, those are strong words from a man whose career has been marred by drugs, a flirtation with the pop world, and a broken marriage. Much of Thomas's renewed confidence is down to just one man, the maestro Angelo Dundee, the man behind Muhammad Ali, and the man who steered Sugar Ray Leonard to that historic comeback victory over Marvin Hagler. Dundee is not that impressed with Mike Tyson. Tyson don't belong in the same category as a Pinkland Thomas. And I mean, I don't mean that sarcastically or berating be a, a, a Tyson. Tyson hasn't been to school yet. Now, all the qualities of a, a Pinkland Thomas beats Tyson. He's got the best jab I've seen since Liston. It's a crushing jab. It, it go right through him. All I can tell you is that him in the right frame of mind, him in the proper conditioning, him not thinking of other things, it's a heck of a fight. He's the best that way out there. So Thomas's hard road back has brought him to Las Vegas and a demanding date with the youngest ever world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. The WBA and WBC titles are at stake. And now with nearly 14,000 fight fans assembled in the outdoor arena of the Las Vegas Hilton, let us join at ringside the former world lightweight champion, Jim Watt, and leading off, Reg Guthridge. So the Rocky theme they're playing then for the entrance of Iron Mike Tyson. And now that... Uh... Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard are out of the picture. This is the man who's carrying the torch of boxing these days, the main man. Now, this is obligatory to carry these belts. This is not Tyson's own idea. Both ruling bodies wanted. There it is, no dressing gown, sweating like anything, ready for business. What a fighter this man is. 20 years old, you remember. I use the word man advisedly. Real throwback, isn't he, to the old bare knuckle fighters. No trims, no tassels, no dressing gowns. And walks in there, and Jim, it looks as though he's already worked 15 rounds. The sweat bouncing off him. Yeah, it's, uh, he's obviously done a good little workout in the dressing room before he came out. That, that's one of the things you have to admire about Tyson. He starts right at the beginning of the fight and never stops. So he's obviously got himself warmed up nicely. Weighing 218 and three-quarter pounds, 
He is undefeated in his professional career with 29 wins, no defeats, 26 KOs. He is the WBC, WBA, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. So referee Carlos Padilla then, 55th uh, title fight for him, and there's the statistical rundown, remember, 20 years of age, that's all he is, uh, Mike Tyson, in there with a big man of 29, just wiping down, he came in absolutely bouncing there with uh, perspiration Tyson, but that's uh, some water Padilla seemed to think, he says don't put too much grease on to Kevin Rooney, the trainer. Okay, Tyson, Thomas, you're going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of foul. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that understood? Seconds come out, finally. So there we go, then. The final words from uh, the dealer. I doubt whether these boxers really hear any of those words. They've got other things on their mind. And there he is. The main man, then, in the fight game today, Mike Tyson. And Pinkman Thomas has a pole of a left-hand punch, and he's going to need it. It's supposed to be a solid jab, a sort of prerequisite to throw a slugger off his stride. But can he stop this bull from coming in? He's still burning for not looking good in his last fight with James Bonecrusher. Oh, and he's opening up at the start now, Mike Tyson. He does love those one-rounders. Thomas won't be found wanting when it comes to a bit of game. This has proved that in the past. He's only had one really poor fight when he lost his championship to Trevor Burbick. Very troubled, he said, about that. And seemed to genuinely fancy his chance uh, against Tyson, but uh, that didn't sway the odds makers at 6-1 to one on Tyson. And what a start by this incredible young champion, the youngest in history. He really must have worked out in the dressing room now. This left up there, he switches that well. So it doesn't look as though that left-hand jab that uh, corner man Angelo Dundee has been telling Thomas to use is going to be much use to him. Now this is the Tyson we really know, isn't it? Trying to wipe out that memory of the bone crusher Smith Waltz. And he's really laying it to Thomas at the start. The crowd loving it. Thomas hating it. 15 stone, 8 and 3 quarter pounds of absolute mind, muscle, menace there, Tyson. Who's going to stop him midway through the first? Jim, what a fighter, Tyson. Tremendous power he has, Reg. He does, doesn't pay anybody any respect whatsoever. He just comes straight through, pays no attention to what they're doing, and then nothing that Thomas has shown so far is going to discourage him. Tyson's last two opponents are simply throws on the night with no belief in themselves. A lot depends on how much belief uh, Thomas has tonight. But to whatever they come in with, I think uh, Tyson's putting a dent on that already. Well, he's not going to get tangled up at close quarters in this fight, Tyson, as he did with Smith. He's going to learn to break the spider's web and not get entangled in it, and he's really unloading some terrific punches. And he'll do well to get over this round now, Pinkland Thomas. Well, you can talk a good fight, but when you get in with this fellow, you can uh, throw all that out. As we get the countdown for the end of the first, can he hang in there for a while? As I said, he's got plenty of guts, Pinkland Thomas. He's standing up well, considering he's taken the full force of those punches. And a man, remember, who's two stone heavier than the great Rocky Marciano. Two stone and over a stone heavier than Joe Frazier was. And he's in there for dealer. He's making sure there's no off-the-bell punches this time. Well, is this man pleased to see that school? Now, what's Angelo going to do now to pull him together? So the doctor's looking in the corner there, and Dundee is very upset by that. That's unusual, Jim, isn't it? it hasn't taken a knockdown, and the flip from Anski, the doctor, came in there. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, well, he took a tremendous amount of punches, bang on the chin. Everyone, every punch that Tyson throws is a jawbreaker. 
and uh, Pinkland took quite a few of them clean on the chin. Obviously the, the doctor was a bit concerned but I don't think he did uh, Pinkland's cause any good by come up and interrupting in the corners because he needs every second in there he can get. Well the overhead look at that and he really is tottering but did well to stand up. Just making sure he hasn't got too much uh, grease on there Thomas. And now he's shouting at the referee as we come out for round two there, the trainer. As Tom, Tom, Tom has stood in the corner there. Look Low punch there, uh, Jim, sorry. Yeah, OK. No, I'm just thinking, he's the look of a man who's gone about eight or nine rounds instead of just one. The, the way he was looking as he came out of the corner. Yeah, nobody knows the troubles he's seen on the face there as he came out. So now let's see if he's learned any lessons now Tyson on uh, fighting in close like this because the big man's bone crusher leaned all over him which uh, made him well let's face it look a bit ordinary and he knew it as he said he wears black all the time Tyson because he likes to look the black bad guy although uh, people who know him well say he certainly isn't outside the ring and I agree with that but inside, I tell you, this fellow's an absolute terror. He's had three wins, Pinkland Thomas, since he lost his championship to Trevor Burbick, so he's on a winning roll, which is why he got the number one position by the WBC. This is for both championships, but scheduled for 12 and not 15 rounds. Now, what's he wrestling for like this, Tyson, Jim? He could do without this. Yeah, but uh, I think every punch he throws is a knockout punch. He's simply waiting for the chance to let one go. He's, he's never in any hurry. This is probably not worrying him too much. It's only the second round. And you notice he's trying to push Thomas off now, but, but Thomas is hanging on to him. But again, it's not really Tyson's fault, this kind of fight. Well, there's Harry Gibbs from London. You can see there's one of the judges. But they, I would think he won't be needed. Thomas looked a bit sluggish in his last fight that I saw here against Danny Sutton. He won it. Well, I don't think he can play Matador too much with that left hand as the ball comes in. So he knows how to get inside punches, Tyson. Puts his head on the opponent's chest and bangs away. He hasn't really taken advantage of that first round absolute superiority Jim no he certainly dropped down the gear again I don't know if that's his plan or it's just that when he gets up close Thomas is grabbing hold of him but uh, as I said he has plenty of time every punch he throws is a powerful punch and sooner or later he obviously believes he's going to start getting through again To round three and think that Thomas did well to overcome that uh, really disastrous start there but remember this when Tyson has had to go the full distance he's won so clearly that's the impressive part of him often punchers who go to the 10 rounds and 12 rounds in this case as well well they can look pretty ordinary but he's won clearly on those So the referee's got to have to work a bit hard here, pulling them apart. Yeah, we can't, you can't really blame anyone for the grab and hold of Tyson inside because nobody can compete with the strength or the, the power he can get into his short punches. So any opponent that ends up getting close to him is going to grab hold of him. Uh, it's a bit ridiculous, Jim, when you think in his home state of New York is too young, too young to legally drink alcohol. And there he is now, the heavyweight champion of the world. Mind you, I wouldn't like to be the bloke that refused him. So look at Thomas now. Is he going to use this effective left-hand jab? He's in... 
Well, very severe uh, warning there, Carlos Padilla for watching heads. They can take mandatory points off for that now. So any success that Thomas has, the, the crowd are willing to cheer anyway. They want to be with the underdog, 6-1 to one on. Although Tyson, of course, is an immense favourite right across the States. And indeed now uh, in Europe. See a little bit of blood in Thomas's eyebrow. I think that clash of heads just looks like a slight little neck back and see a little bit of blood. Yeah, pa Padilla looked at that a long time, actually. Well, we said he'd have to work hard there, uh, the referee, and it looks as though he's going to. Trouble with Thomas, uh, Jimmy, boxes open to mouth. There's a sort of distressed look about him, even when he's winning. Yeah, I don't think he'll want to get caught in the chin by Tyson when his mouth is open. But, uh, it's possible that in that first round, Thomas was shocked by the power that, that Tyson had because he's managed to get himself back into it a little bit more since then. He just didn't seem to know what happened in that first round. The crowd don't like it now. They're, they're remembering Tyson and Bone Crusher and they don't want that. No, he's butting the heck out of you. He's got go, but nail him. But go first, go first. Don't lay in the clinches. I want you to go first out of everything, okay? Guy's bump's getting desperate. He's trying to butt the heck out of you, you know what I mean? It's all right. I want you to go first with everything. He comes jumping at you, go for him. Let's have a look at this now. He's complaining about the head coming in a bit, Jim. Well, be being that he is short and he's got to get inside, he obviously, even the whether he's meaning it or not, he is a little bit dangerous with the head. Okay. Round four. fighters that uh, said they could beat Tyson but uh, none have baited him in the way that uh, Thomas did early on in the initial press conferences so I think Tyson came in with, with a little bit of needle in the belly there oh, right over the back of the head it's just as well for Thomas that see Tyson's going to have to throw punches on the way in if he moves into to a clinch then his opponents have grabbed and hold of him and stopping them working he's going to have to punch as he moves and he's leaving at that second or so too late well his trainer says he's still at college as far as professional boxing goes and he's right uh, but of course you've got to judge him as a champion Jim that's the point not as a learner yeah, well, I would say that's his problem at the moment. He's, he's moving in before he lets the punches go. He wants to let the punches go as he's moving in. hoping that he might, uh, Tyson might punch himself out a little bit. He likes the idea of people who have taken him to this, but they've all been six feet five, and he, he does have trouble with tall fighters. He's supposed to be 5'11", Tyson, but uh, there's often a dispute about that. He certainly doesn't appear it now. So he looks as though he's got to work a bit hard for his money. He's had to work to get in shape for this $2 million there, Tyson. Well, most game, you tell that to Tyson. He didn't even finish school and now has bought his first Rolls Royce.
We were never sure what kind of Pinkland Thomas would come in tonight. He's had one or two off nights. He's had brilliant times. Had a few troubles and admitted admitted to being a drug, drug addict at one time and speaks openly about it. To the fifth Tyson's corner man there Kevin Rooney saying you're not using your left jab at all and he wants him to but I've got my doubts whether he can actually out jab Pinkman Thomas that's his best punch there it is there you see match, match trying to match him with it what a chance for Thomas though almost out of nowhere he got this to get back to number one six hundred and fifty thousand dollars the cheap end of the purse but enough it's just that bit of rawness showing with tyson at times a little bit of suffering is missing yeah well a few times he has been taken into the, the later stages and uh, simply because uh, his technique is a little bit lacking but normally he makes up for it with the power he has but you can see he's short of ideas here it's time now to do something else i think uh, thomas has got used to these lunges and uh, the, the punches that are coming his way and he knows what's coming now so tyson now has to think of something else maybe show a feint and try to draw tyson's uh, uh, thomas's lead and come back with counters of his own but he's a little bit short on ideas tonight trying to use the left jab now let's see to break up the opponent's concentration with that a bit before he throws the heavy stuff although i should think those jab left jabs hurt enough he doesn't stop saying watch the head jim the referee does he i think he might take a point away from tice well it was just a little bit dangerous a couple of seconds ago well it certainly was there but not with his head I think we've come to expect so much from Tyson now and uh, when he's not getting his punches home we tend to criticise him but we have to remember that uh, not so long ago Pinkland Thomas was regarded as the best heavyweight in the world he just he wasn't paying attention he is a top class fighter So there's the size of this man's neck bolted onto those brawny shoulders there. In fact, when somebody said, right, will you make a comeback, Ray Leonard? He said, well, I could always fight Mike Tyson's neck. That must weigh 160 pounds. Have a look at some replay there, Jim, with the jabs coming in. Yeah, see, that, that was the head again. It was a little bit dangerous for the head that time. That's when the idea warned them. so they're having to change the glove here now this is this uh, 
the Henry Cooper Muhammad Ali scene all over again so they are really whispering the words of wisdom there isn't he Rudy he doesn't want the world and his brother to hear So the Marshall Sherman has announced to the audience here that the glove had torn and had to be replaced. And uh, it was good to know they've got the spare gloves on hand. Into the sixth. Well, Tyson tasted a bit of leather for the, uh, the glove on the left hand. I wonder what the new one's going to do. Thomas has been saying that using the, the solid left lead like that is a sort of key to the door and that opens everything up for him but uh, he just hasn't been able to hold this fellow off enough sorts of advice now coming from uh, outside the ring and I suspect from a uh, young lady an actress Robin Gibbons uh, stars in head of the class is actually dating Tyson at the moment see now the crowd are booing there Jim a bit unfairly because they're fighting inside and that proved it and then they immediately switched to cheers there yeah, well, just as I said, by Tyson's own standards, this is a uh, kind of calm stuff. You can expect to see the dynamite all the time. Oh, he got the job done there. I think he must have heard you there, Jim. What a peach of a left hook that was. And he's going to do it in the sixth because he's only midway through. And this is the way he finishes him off now. The master of the, the finishing stuff. What a fighter. Absolute ferocious. And what a game man. He took every punch in the book there, Pinkland Thomas. He is not going to make this in the sixth round and you really your heart goes out with him the, the embarrassment of him being knocked out like that with all the heart in the world he can't control the legs but what a tremendous finish there by the iron man himself who's following the loser over to the corner once the bell's gone and it's all over he's the most compassionate guy in the world great supporter of kids charities here but i tell you he's he really is some guy in the ring what a finish jim it has to be without doubt the best finisher in the game today one good solid punch got through shook Tom, Thomas up a little bit and then over they came every punch every punch was uh, meant to nail him to the floor and eventually over he went a tremendous finish from Tyson there's manager Jim Jacobs there just whispering in his ear you can make a few more million time well done it's a very close knit to corner there and there's two doctors of the Nevada State Commission working there in Pinkland Thomas's corner well, what a fighter. I'm emphasize yet again, Jim. 20 years old, and here's the finish. So once he gets the opponent in trouble, every punch that comes over is a finisher. It's a cracking uppercut, and uh, set to come in with the rest. And we look at another angle. I mean, his head almost departs the shoulders there, Jim, doesn't it? He's just got no chance. And what a brave guy. He took some really hard punches before he went down. Look at that. Absolute on the button. And you knew he went down there, his, his head flopped like Wurzel gummies there, and he couldn't get up. Jim? Yeah, every single punch from all angles, and he gets full power into everyone. That, that was a signal of the punch that came up the way, and then uh, overcome the left hook, and that was all over for the night. And once again there, this overhead shot. Now you can see the real ferocity of this man in action. So here's Tyson's reaction then, and he's talking to my colleague, Larry Merchant. Mike, until the end, that was tougher than it was supposed to be. Was it tougher than you thought it would be? Mike. We'll fight, man. We'll fight. We'll fight. It's my pleasure to give you a shot at the title. Because you deserve it. Answer the question. Let me start again. It, it looked like it was much tougher than it was supposed to be up until the end. Of course, but you know, I saw him in the previous fights, he would get tired. And I said, if I knock him out early when he tired, he won't have no defense and it'll be spectacular. And I knew he would get tired somewhere around the seventh round. And I saw him last two fights, he was gasping for a little air. 
You said before the previous round that you thought he was getting tired. He was getting tired. But he seemed to establish his jab pretty well and frustrate you quite a bit while you were trying to box with him in those rounds. Oh, as you know, no. But as you know, I was getting my jab off too. And as you know, he has a great jab, like everyone knows. You know, and he's a great fighter. And I feel I'm the best fighter in the world because I beat the best fighter in the world. Everybody gave him the regard. Do you feel he was the second best heavyweight out there? Absolutely. Now I proved it. Was, when Kevin said to you before the round, start throwing punches with mean intention, sounded to me like he was really saying, forget that jab I've been telling you to throw he, all this no, time. No, no, <laughs> no. He wanted me to use the jab, but I was trying to convince him, which is my fault, and I should never do that. He was getting tired. Now you said, give me one more round. Give me one more round. Now do whatever you say. Okay. Mike, let's take a look at the knockout sequence of punches. You describe it for us. Well, I saw I, I could sneak the uppercut in there. And I was just working it to the body, to the head. I saw it was hurt. And I just put everything together. He was tough, but I said, I'm going to put him together. And as you see, I'm putting him together. Boom. You hit him some decent shots up to then. Were you surprised that he took him as well no, as I knew. Did? I saw him fight Weaver. And Weaver's the greatest knockout puncher around when he was fighting. And he took Weaver's best shot. What is your feeling of satisfaction uh, compared to the last time we had you here? Well, I opened up and I was using my head more. And now when I go to the gym, I don't have to listen to too much criticism, even though I'm going to hear it. Well, Mike Tyson might have displayed a certain youthful.